Welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. We should have some audio going. You should be able to our, see our cover slide. And we will begin the session. Let me start off by saying it is recorded this evening. So throughout the event, if you have any audio or video issues, you can always come back and watch and listen later. I'm Ruth. I'll be the behind the scenes uh, moderator, button pusher, that kind of thing. Dan will be the main person for the main event, as will all of you. Throughout the session tonight, we'll be using the WebEx chat features. We are not going to feature any fall, uh, polls tonight. Um, let's give the chat a try. So find your chat bubble somewhere down there. And we'd like to ask you to share with everybody. So there's some uh, a variety of drop down options. If you pick all attendees, interestingly enough, neither Dan nor I can see it. So we'd like for you to just give us your name and your location and send that chat out to everyone. All right. Um, getting some messages about audio. So I'm gonna attend to some things in the chat here shortly. Okay. Um, Dan, do you hear me? Yes, I do hear you. Great. All right. So I just have a couple individuals to work with and thank you people out there for telling us your name and location and for sending the, sending the chat out to everyone. A uh, reminder, if you do, if you choose all attendees, neither Dan nor I can see it. So I'll just keep reminding you select everyone. All right. Um, that's all I'm going to do. I'll attend to a few things in the chat and over to you, Dan. Thank you, Ruth. I appreciate it. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. Um, my name is Dan Wilkie and I am uh, a math teacher uh, in uh, high school. I teach pre-calculus, uh, multiple levels of that, and then I teach the IB math classes uh, at Christ Church Episcopal School uh, here in Greenville, South Carolina. As you can tell, I have a very deep Southern accent. <laughs> oh, no, not really. I am a transient from the North, uh, sick of the snow and winter weather. Uh, so I finally found a home down here in South Carolina. Uh, I've been teaching IB math for uh, 17, 18 years now. Um, so I've been through many iterations of the different curriculum uh, and uh, so excited after this first round of, of testing took place. Hopefully you all were too. But uh, I love seeing everybody where they're from. Um, oh from Jakarta. That's awesome. So we got um, a lot of people from around the United States and some people outside, which is totally cool uh, to, to see you joining us. So if you joined us for our first webinar, which was last month, thank you so much uh, for, for coming back. And if you are a newbie, uh, just wanting to see what we're all about, thank you for joining us. Uh, this is the second in our series this year of eight webinars that we're doing. We're basically last month, we just gave a little bit of introduction, kind of overview of what we're going to be doing for the for the year, uh, what TI is doing, some, some little inside tips from IB. I've been lucky enough over the last seven years to be uh, both an, an examiner uh, for the, uh, I, I do paper one, uh, for the, in this case, I'm not doing applications and interpretations, and I'm also a moderator for the internal assessment. So that definitely keeps my uh, May and June time pretty busy, uh, but it is kind of cool that I get to see, you know, what students from honestly around the world, because I get papers and exams from around the world, and I can kind of see how they're answering them and um, do some comparisons to my own backyard, uh, which is very nice. But it also allows me to kind of give you a little insight through the IB process. So uh, several years ago, Texas Instruments came to me and basically said, hey, we want to do more with IB uh, because the curriculum's changing. So we thought we would, you know, give our input, our side of things with respect to 
how to incorporate Texas Instruments technology into an IB classroom. So they asked me to basically come up with um, some activities for for them to use, uh, some IB style questions for them to use, uh, and they created a whole website. And I'll show you that a little bit later uh, when we get into some activity stuff. But uh, it's been a wonderful process, you know. Over the last, I think, year and a half, we have added, you know, about 50 to 60 activities uh, to choose from uh, on the website. Every activity comes with a, an IB style question. So you can not only use your TI technology in your classrooms, but you can also have some IB experience with that. Uh, what we're currently working on, and I'll kind of go through that a little bit later, is adding newer activities. Uh, and then updating older activities to make them more IB, uh, if I were to describe it. So today's wonderful, wonderful webinar, and I'm going to share my screen right now, uh, is about topic one. Uh, like I said, we are doing eight webinars this year. We've already done one, so this is our, our second webinar. Uh, and we're going to talk, talk, uh, tackle. We're going to tackle each topic. All right. Uh, that is covered in all four, I guess you can say Ivy math classes. So we're going to go over, you know, topic 1 today, which, as you can kind of see on my PowerPoint, uh, is, um. Just numbers and algebra, so there's not too much going on with respect to numbers and algebra that are specific to exam style questions or the IA. Uh, there are some topics that are kind of always covered and, and I'm going to kind of go through some of that right now. Uh, but the plan is, and I'll show you the agenda. Why don't we just kind of jump right into uh, the start of this webinar? Uh, so what we're going to cover, uh, we already did our wonderful introductions. Thank you, Ruth. And we're going to cover kind of what's new in the curriculum. Take a, a little brief look at, at what was added or what was changed about the curriculum. And then we're going to, as I graded the exams in May, and definitely I'm not the only one. So there were a lot of people grading exams. Uh, but from my personal perspective, I wanted to include uh, basically, you know, what was out there. All right. What what was on the exam that from topic one that just kind of stood out to me as I was grading them. Uh, then we're going to talk about, you know, how topic one numbers and algebra were kind of infused into the math exploration, uh, how, how teachers and students incorporated them into, into their papers. Uh, then I also added a little bit here with, you know, just a few little helpful hints, tips and tricks uh, on your calculators just to kind of, you know, maybe enhance things, make things a little bit easier. Uh, as you are preparing to take the exam or writing the, the IA. And then what we're going to finish with kind of the second half of, of today's webinar is what we are doing with TI on the website, which means we're going to take a look at a specific activity, kind of go through that. And then I'm also going to show you what I'm currently working on. And I honestly love your feedback on what you think could make it more IB like and, and what you think could enhance it. So I know you maybe didn't know this was gonna happen, but I this is a sharing type of webinar. So in the last kind of 15, 20 minutes, I would like to get your thoughts because uh, I have a few activities to show you that I'm enhancing uh, to put an IB spin on it. And I'd love to, to hear your take because what I truly, truly love about Texas Instruments is they continually listen to teachers. Uh, everything they put into their calculators and into their website, you know, always comes from the teacher perspective and how it can help their classroom and how it can help their students. And they do alter things based on what you say. And, and that's one thing that I'm trying to do as well. I want these activities that you can find on the TI website to be extremely helpful and, you know, get you through some tough times uh, on your you know, your journey to not only to the exams, but also writing your um, your papers. And then we're going to finish with if you have any 
ideas that you'd like to see in the future for activities. So I have a list and I'll show you that list that people contributed last webinar. Uh, but the more you can let me know, the more we can add and get that out for you. Hopefully within this school year, um, but let's get started uh, for the 1st 1. So, just kind of looking through the curriculum. Here were just a few of the things that may have altered slightly uh, going to the new curriculum last year. So when we went from Ivy math studies to applications and interpretations or going from math HL or SL to analysis and approaches, we did see some changes. Uh, now, the majority of the changes happened with applications and interpretations, but uh, there were a few with the analysis and approaches. So, um, and I just kind of gave you a list right here just to kind of look at, uh, and I have a document uh, that I shared when we did these webinars in the past, we did them uh, kind of last year. Um, I, I shared this document that was kind of a what's new and I can definitely share that with you if, if you'd be interested. It's a nice kind of spreadsheet of all the topics that are covered in all of the subjects uh, where the Remember that in all four classes, there are, uh, I think, 60 hours of course material that's kind of taught uh, for all of them. Oh, yes, please. Awesome. So, yeah, I will definitely share that. Uh, I just didn't know if, because I shared it so much during my last webinars uh, last year that I didn't know if people still would want to see that. But then you said yes. And so, yes, I will send that to you. Uh, no problem there. Um, so, you can kind of see. You know, the use of sigma, sigma notation uh, definitely was not in the studies class, but now, you know, is in the, you know, the AI class. And if it's okay with you, I'm going to call them AI and AA, if that's okay, uh, as we kind of differentiate between the two classes. So, the use of sigma notation, introduction of logs, and with base 10 and base E, you know, that kind of showed up, you know, that wasn't there before, but we get to use technology with it. Uh, solving systems up to three variables. That's kind of new. And then when we get to the higher level AI course, you know, you're looking at laws of exponents, rational exponents, uh, the infinite geometric series, and just a ton with matrices. And you saw that because when they took the higher level options, they wanted to still hold on to some of that material. So they kind of split that up between the um, AI higher level class and the AA higher level class and where the analysis and approaches got mostly calculus stuff, you know, the AI kind of got the other higher level options stuff and matrices was a big part of that. So uh, that's basically some of the, I just highlighted some of the bigger ones, but the, and I'll show you uh, the spreadsheet um, kind of in, in, in a second, because I'll, I'll show you the documents. And it's just, it's very nicely color coded to show you what was new, what was old, what's been transferred, what was removed and, and all that stuff. So uh, I'll share that with you. Uh, there wasn't too much different from the analysis and approaches as compared to the math SL and HL uh, courses. Uh, but just a few of the things uh, that were noticed were just deductive proofs, you know, that were in there. Uh, binomial expansions with kind of having um, the fractions. Uh, that have negative indices all right there. And then, of course, partial fraction. So just a few things that I noticed that kind of stuck out to me uh, for those classes. All right, moving on. So some items that stood out for me as I was grading uh, the exam, and it wasn't necessarily that students did poorly on them. It was just something that, you know, there was enough uh, to, to, to just to let you know that maybe focusing on that a little bit more in your courses might help them on the exam. Uh, and one is just kind of writing answers in the scientific notation form uh, and students making that jump. And I, and I love, you know, TI and I've worked with TI for now. This is my 6th year uh, and I, and I just, it's just so much fun to get to to go around to different schools and, and teach teachers and. Uh, I just love that part of, of of working with them, but you know I think scientific notation when you when you look at the calculator could be 
uh, a little difficult at first, you know, with the EE button that's there. Um, so just kind of spending some time showing students how to use that on the calculator uh, would be, you know, extremely helpful uh, to, to show them how to input it on the calculator, but then translate that when you get that E on the calculator, because, you know, unfortunately it doesn't show up as times 10 to a certain exponent. So, um, so just kind of doing that would, would be helpful kind of going in the future. How do we go from the E notation on the handheld to, you know, writing it in the times 10 to the, to the K exponent form? Uh, now, I only had X access to, uh, I think it was time zone two papers. Uh, and then I had uh, my own, since I'm in, uh, I'm, I, I think I'm in time zone one. Uh, I had those papers that I gave um, to my students. So I had access to, to not everything that was out there, but this is just what I saw from what I had seen. Um, something else from topic one is just finding the first term in the common difference. Uh, and, and this was a little bit uh, of a challenge uh, that I noticed is because the eighth term was equivalent to the sum of the first eight terms, that kind of threw students off a little bit in the question that I had seen. Uh, but just kind of just hitting those um, arithmetic and geometric sequences and series uh, as a part of topic one is, is very important there. Uh, probably the one of the toughest questions that I had seen, uh, especially for the analysis and approaches class, was it was a binomial expansion problem, uh, a quadratic binomial, and there was a, an exponent of n plus one, and uh, the students tended to struggle with that. How could they figure out? Because they were asked to find out which term had a certain coefficient, uh, and so that was a bit of a challenge. Uh, there's also always going to be a compound interest problem on the tests, so and that's the activity that we're going to go over today. Uh, that's a, it's a compound interest activity, so hopefully that is of interest to you. Um, I like that activity, so um, we'll go through that. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, percentage error. This is it's an easy formula to use, but I just don't understand why people don't use it correctly. Um, there's always some sort of either they're flip flopping um, the two that they have to subtract in the numerator, or they're forgetting the absolute value. And unfortunately, we have to kind of take points off for that when we're grading. So uh, just remember to you know follow the formula uh, and things will be okay. Uh, and then just there was a straightforward pretty much geometric sequence problem that I had saw on the exam uh, that, that most people uh, handled pretty pretty easily. So from topic one, these were just what I saw from the from the exams with respect to uh, analysis and approaches and applications and interpretation. Um, but just kind of give you a little heads up there. And then moving on. So what about the IA? So when students are writing a paper and you're trying to guide them through the process, you know, how much does topic one kind of play into that paper? And honestly, not too much. Um, so you can kind of see a list of things that I saw. I graded probably 80 to 90 papers uh, this year, uh, IAs. And, you know, these were the most common things that I saw from topic one percentage error. But again, just remember that the correct formula needs to be used. Uh, but why are they using it? What is the purpose of using the percentage error? So one big thing with writing the IA, uh, and I'm just going to throw a shout out to something else that I'm working on for IB, uh, I'm doing a uh, internal assessment math exploration video series where I'm kind of kind of helping teachers out with how to prepare their students and the process it takes to go through it. Uh, so we've finished, I'm, I'm doing it six videos. Uh, I've just finished the first three, so that should be out in the next month. Um, and I'll kind of at our next webinar, a little teaser to kind of come to our third webinar of the year. Uh, I'll be passing out that, handing out that link so you can kind of see that with that video series. Uh, again, just to help you with the IA process. Um, 
the use of scientific notation. Now, this kind of goes with both the calculator and using a spreadsheet as Excel or Google Sheets or something like that. Students have a tendency to when they're using the spreadsheet to leave their numbers in scientific notation form, which is OK, but they should not be writing it with the letter E like they see on the calculator or like an Excel spreadsheet will write it uh, as 3.2 E to whatever exponent. Uh, so that is no notation that unfortunately we mark down for. So please, when they're using scientific notation, make sure it's in the times 10 to the, um, you know, K exponent, whatever that happens to be. There were a few, a very small few papers that I saw that used arithmetic and geometric sequences. Um, so that wasn't that common, uh, but I did see that. Unfortunately, with the math exploration, students were still leaning toward a more statistical based paper, which is okay. So please don't discourage that. It's just that was still, especially the students or the teachers who tra who went from studies to uh, the applications and interpretations class, uh, there were still a lot of stats papers. So just make sure that when you're doing a math exploration, it's a little bit different than just, you know, collecting data, analyzing it and talk about it, that sort of thing. They really have to dig deep with within these these type of uh, topics and papers. So please just, just kind of keep that in mind. Uh, statistic papers are still good, but um, more in depth discussion and further questioning has to happen uh, that I noticed in my papers that I that I graded. And then there were a couple papers, a few papers in there that actually, you know, did discuss uh, some money situations. Uh, so, um, so, but that was about it. So topic one is not a huge IA topic. Usually we see more in the uh, probability and stats in topic four, calculus in topic five, uh, or some functions, you know? So uh, unfortunately the topic one, there's not a lot. So if you, I'll have more to share in the future webinars with respect to that, but this is what I got from, from the initial year of math exploration. All right, so moving on. All right, so a few things on the calculator that I'd like to discuss. Uh, it's just what I think, especially in topic one, that will be beneficial for you and your students uh, that are allowed. All right, so you'll notice when I put my picture here, uh, these are all allowed on the, you know, IV testing, AP testing, okay? Uh, actually, this is an old picture. I need to fix that. So I apologize for that one. Uh, but this is also allowed on the um, IB exam. Uh, now, I had to help my IB coordinator this year before the exam started to make sure because I had students who had both these calculators. Uh, and we just had to make sure that they were in the proper test mode. So if you are using the Inspire, just make sure you help your IB coordinator out. Because the last thing you need to have is, uh, you know, the wonderful, whether it be a man or a woman, come in on the day of your exam and inspect things. Um, and you, you don't want to get dinged on that. So help out your IB coordinator to just kind of make sure that the right things are turned off. Because if you're using the blue calculators, the CAS calculators, you know, the cast mode has to be turned off, but then there's other functions that also have to be turned off. So just kind of make sure that you're aware of that. Uh, and you can find that information either from your IB coordinator or, you know, I can send that as well. Uh, I have a, a, a PDF of that if you're interested um, in, in seeing that. So what can we use on both calculators? So, and all this stuff that I have listed here can be done on both calculators. So we have not only a, a numeric solver, okay, so we can solve it. And it's funny because I tend to use the Inspire only in my class. So when I was preparing this, I said, okay, well, I got to see how to use it on my 84. And it was completely different than, than what I was expecting to see. Um, so just kind of be aware of 
how to use the numeric solver if that's something you want your students to do. Um, so, and I can kind of show um, a little bit of this. I'll end the show real quick and kind of pop up that on here. See, I have my Inspire ready to go uh, with, I can do the solver. So if I'm on a calculator page and I can go to menu and then algebra. Uh, now, everything is, is allowed here when it's a cast calculator, but when I turn off certain functions, I really don't have a whole lot going on. Okay, I can only use the numeric. Everything else on this page is closed off. So, but I can use the numeric solve. And this is basically, you type in the equation, comma, you know, what your, you know, what variable you're looking for. Pretty straightforward uh, for that. But for the 84, oh, you don't wanna see all of that. Uh, so the, and the 84, when you go to numeric solver, uh, so if you go to math and then toward the bottom, you'll notice that we have numeric solver down here. So I was expecting something the same because I hadn't used it in a while, but then I see these boxes here, okay? And you're basically supposed to type in, you know, an expression in this first, you know, and then an expression in the second, and then you want it to solve, you know? So if the left side of the equation, you'd put in E1, the right side you put in E2, and then you'd go ahead and solve it, and it gives you its best estimate. Uh, so that's kind of the situation here. So that was new to me when I was looking at that. And I always tell my students on a daily basis that when I use the Inspire, I always learn new things about it. Uh, but here, I learned something new about the 84 as well uh, for that. All right, so also with respect to um, the calculators, please show your students. And yes, Lynn, that is allowed. Uh, that is one thing that when you turn off everything, and now that I turned off the slideshow, I can kind of show you, um, where's my document? Here's the kind of document that my IB coordinator gave to me um, here today. Uh, so basically with the Inspire, uh, it basically, you this is what you need to disable, okay, with respect to uh, the calculators. Uh, and you are still allowed to have the numeric solve on there. Yay, I'm glad you're excited about that. So if you don't have access to this from your IB coordinator, I can easily send this to you. So you're aware of what's allowed and what's not. Um, because honestly, it was the, the day before the test that I looked at this and said, oh, well, I got to remember to turn all this stuff off for her before she gives the exam. So it, it's good to, to refresh uh, before you kind of go through there. Um, all right, so knowing the finance applications is um, good. I will send that out. That is awesome. Um, definitely, definitely. So I will do that in one of two ways. Uh, at the end, I will give my email address and you can you know email me and I'll send you all the documents that I mentioned today. Um, or we can maybe Ruth, maybe we can somehow, is there a way to get these out to them? I'm not sure uh, after we're said and done, but I can definitely do that. Um, yes, yes we can. Okay, awesome. Thank you, Ruth. Uh, so remember with the finance applications, uh, and we're gonna look at this in the activity, so I'm not gonna spend too much time on it, but for the 84 and for the Inspire, it's pretty similar. Uh, they're pretty similar with entering the values uh, and then just kind of going with it. So I'm going to save that one for when we get to the activity, uh, but I'm going to talk about, you know, how to graph sequences and then use the table. So please remember that if you're using your 84 and you want to go to your Y equals right now, it's in its function mode uh, with Y equals whatever. Uh, but if we go to the mode, we can change that uh, to function, parametric, polar, or Sequence, so we can actually turn it into the sequence mode. And we can change that. And when we go to Y equals now we have. Uh, our sequence mode uh, for this, so we can type in our equation and then once we have our equation in there and go to 2nd graph our table, we will have a table of values and those are the the items or the, the terms of the sequence. 
So that's just a quick way if students don't want to sit there and work it all out and it's a calculator portion of the exam, uh, a nice simple way to kind of check their, their, their work, their answers. Uh, and it's very similar on the Inspire. Okay, so when you're on your Inspire and we are um, on a graph page, we don't have to go to a different screen for this. We can just go to menu, graph entry, edit, and then here we have our sequence mode that we can kind of turn that into. And we got the same situation. So when you're doing that, again, it's just a way for students to kind of verify or look at their answers as they're kind of going through that. Um, which I, I think is is rather beneficial uh, and it could save time too. Uh, scientific notation. I think everybody's aware of that, you know, that E button. Okay. Um, so on the 84. Uh, so when we're using this E, which is above the comma, so we get that E uh, right there and that's your times 10, you know, that's your times 10 notation. So whatever number is before, and I should have put a number before. Okay, times. All right, so that, and then it's whatever number we put after that, that's your exponent. So if we put it to the fifth, that's 2.34 times 10 to the fifth. So you've probably heard this, you know this, but just having your students know how to rewrite this number right here with times 10 to a certain exponent will pay off in both the exam and the IA if they use it. So just know what they get uh, for that answer. Um, and then the same thing on the Inspire, uh, we have our E button, uh, which is uh, rates in the, rate right where the alphabet starts down at the bottom of the screen, there's our E. So same idea there uh, for that. So if they're using that button, just kind of make sure they remember what it means what it means there. Okay, uh, scientific notation, and then how to off alter uh, the significant figures. Uh, this is a big one because I do this on a regular basis. You know, my students are so worried about what to round to uh, because they come out of a science class where science teachers really put a lot of focus on, you know, getting the proper number of, of significant figures and digits, you know, based on the numbers that they're using in the beginning of the problem. And then they come to math class and they say, well, what do you want us to round it to? Oh, one decimal point or two decimal points or whatever. Uh, and then they get to IB and they're kind of confused about what they should be rounding to. So what I try to tell them is, and I'll share this all with you, that on an exam, if they don't, if they're not asked to round to a certain number, uh, like for money, you always have to round to, you know, the hundredth spot, uh, which is two decimal places. So you get that, you know, that the, the sense in there. So for money problems, that's the case. But for everything else, it's rare that they do ask. Now, sometimes they do. I'm not saying they don't, but sometimes um, students are just left to, what do I round to? What do I round to? Uh, so if they are ever confused, you can just have them write it out, right? As many digits as they want, because honestly, if what we're looking for is four or more, okay, because the number that they get should round correctly to three significant figures. So if they can't remember that, then writing out four or more digits is the way to go. All right, so again, if they don't remember to round, all right, to the standard three sig figs, uh, just write four or more numbers. Okay, and and they'll be safe. They'll be they're they're not going to get it wrong. Of course, if they've done everything correctly, but they won't get it wrong uh, based on you know how to round. Uh, but you also have the ability to change that on the calculators. So on the eighty four, when you go to your mode screen, uh, right here on the third row where we have this is our decimal setting, and you can kind of see it's written up here decimal setting. We can have it floating, which is basically it fills the line with as many digits as it can, or you can change it to, you know, zero, one, two, three, four, five, up to nine digits. So you have the ability to kind of tell them, oh, if we want three significant figures, you can have them put it on three and it'll be fine. Okay. So that's just something to think about uh, if they're struggling to remember what to round to. Uh, you have the option to do that. You can do the same thing on the Inspire. Uh, we would just have to go to our settings screen. 
So from this, I would go to my doc and then down to settings status and the document settings. And you'll see the first thing right away is your display digits. So if we just click on that, we have the option to float like we did in the 84, or we can float to a certain number or we can fix to a certain number. So there's a few more options with the Inspire, but you can kind of share that with them as well. So if you are unaware of that, I just thought I'd share uh, um, with the, the kind of decimal situation. All right, so those are just some simple t tips and tricks. Now for each, um, so it would give to three significant figures, okay? Uh, so basically it just kind of, it'll give you the three values there uh, for that. Uh, let's see, for float three, do you run into issues with multi-step problems for rounding too soon? Yes, and that's what, and I'm glad you said that, Michael, because that could come up as a nice discussion piece. Uh, so if you if you give the students the option to round all the time on your calculator, then you can actually talk to them about, well, what happens if you have to use the answer to part A further down into, you know, or part one and further down into part three? So will that give you any problems? So that's a great discussion piece to have with them. So, uh, and I and I actually like talking to them about that. When do we round? Because there was a problem on that I was grading for the uh, applications and interpretations um, exam this year for time zone two, and it was a seven mark question about finding the, I think the surface area of a three dimensional figure. And basically the students had to use, there were so many steps involved that they had to keep using rounded answers to kind of keep going forward. And that's a perfect situation to discuss of, is it better to not turn it on in our calculator to restrict how many digits are showing because we have to keep using. So actually that's a great discussion to have with that. So thank you for saying that. All right. So those are my tips and tricks. So every webinar will kind of do a few more tips and tricks, you know, for, you know, for IB on the calculators. So there are just a few. Topic one is not a heavy one. So, um, uh, but I thought I'd just move on now. All right, so today for this webinar, uh, I wanna share with you uh, one of our updated activities that I kind of put an IB spin on. So the question is, where do we find all of our IB activities? So the, the website, if you just go to education.ti.com, so I'm going to go there now to get rid of all this extra stuff. So here's where I am. I'm at education.ti.com, and this is just the home page. You'll notice the big thing right now is uh, Python. So Python is huge, so it's on both the 84 and the Inspire. So if you're into coding, please try it out. I sound like a salesman for the Python process. <laughs> um, so I actually haven't started doing Python with my classes yet. I'm still doing basic. But anyways, so from here, you're gonna go to, there's one of two places. Uh, you can go to the resources section and you'll notice that down here in the lower left, you'll see IB resources, or you can go to activities and then over here in the top right, you can go to IV resources. So there's two places for that. So if we click on IV resources, here is your uh, TI page for IB, which uh, I was so excited when it first started running um, last summer. Uh, so just to kind of show you what's on here, just a quick overview of what's here. Uh, in the middle of the page are where you're going to go to the two different classes. So you're gonna to go to either analysis and approaches or applications and interpretation. So for here, uh, and then at the bottom, you'll notice that there are the webinars. So this is one place you could have gone to register for our webinars. So thank you for doing that. So looking at this, we have our live webinars, which you know that's what we're doing now, but we also have everything we've done in the past. So you can always go back and if you miss something or want to revisit something, um, you'll notice that we have, uh, this was the first one we just did uh, last month in September. So year two of the IB, just, this is just the next steps. What we're gonna do, since we already did one year of exams and IAs, you know, what are we gonna do now? 
this is our second year doing it. So, and then below that, you'll see the different webinars we had last year, kind of talking about the, the new topics. Uh, so that's the old stuff. Uh, but again, you can register here for future webinars if you'd like. So now if I were to just click on analysis and approaches uh, to browse the activities, so what you will see, and I'm just gonna scroll down really quick, but you'll see all these dark blue activities are for the 84. All the light blue activities are for the Inspire. So there's a lot of activities that we have posted already, okay, for this, um, for the IB site. And what you'll notice is that some of them say new and updated. All right. And so what that means is, you know, initially we just went through the stockpile of hundreds and hundreds of activities that TI educators have already done and said, what would fit best with IB? And so we posted those. Our next step was to design new ones. Okay. Because there's new topics that just are not covered by TI like Voronoi diagrams. That was the first one I tackled. So there's now an activity for Voronoi diagrams, all right? So when we get to, um, you know, trigonometry and geometry, that's gonna be one that I'm gonna highlight. So if you're interested in the Voronoi diagram activity, please join us for that webinar. Now, since this is topic one, and you wanna condense this, you'll notice this is all the activities. So the first drop down on the left, I now have my choices here. I'm going to go to numbers and algebra, and so it's been reduced. And then I can also pick the technology, either Inspire or 84 or 83. Uh, so now that you've, I've kind of scrolled down, you'll see now there's only seven 84 activities and seven, or sorry, eight uh, Inspire activities. So what I did is I took the old activities and I updated some of them. And one of them that I updated was this compound interest. I put a little IB spin. So we're gonna look at that activity and we'll look at it from both the 84 and Inspire perspective uh, really quick here. So once you click on this, you'll see a little screenshot of the TNS file, or if it's the 84, you'll see a screenshot of just the work shown on the 84. And it gives you a little objective vocabulary and an overview of what we are trying to accomplish here. And then down at the bottom, you'll have a zip file that contains everything that corresponds to the activity, which is basically all seven of these items that you see right here. So we have in PDF form, the student activity, a teacher's notes, which is basically the activity, but from a teacher perspective. So you, it's good to always do these activities first, but this kind of gives you notes and backgrounds and tips and stuff kind of going through it. And then there's also an IB question with it. So when you're done with the activity, you can either give this IB question as maybe an assessment, or you can give it part of the lesson, or you can put it in your next test, that sort of thing, but it's there for you to use. So there's PDF versions of that, but there's also uh, um, Microsoft documents for that. So you have the ability to adjust them. So if I were to click on the student activity, uh, and just the Microsoft document, this is what we're going to see. There you go. So we see what the students uh, will be doing. Now, with the Inspire activity, this follows along with uh, a TNS file or an Inspire file. So the students would uh, either on their calculators have this file open, or you would have it open on maybe your, if you have a Promethean board or smart board or something uh, on the front of the room. And then the students would basically move along and answer questions about uh, this money, compound interest. So you'll notice that we have, you know, some real world compound interest problems here uh, where, you know, the formula is given, okay? The students have to plug in certain things, but since they're following it along on a TNS file, they're also inputting stuff on the calculator. So I'm gonna show you that file real quick. Uh, let's get out of this. Cancel that. So that's my warm up today. Okay. So this is the file that kind of is is attached to the the activity. Uh, so we're basically going to investigate, you know, the interest rate and the number of times interest is paid each year on compound interest. And as we go through this, you know, 
we have a nice color coded situation where it's kind of establishing what everything is in the formula. And then we start with an initial amount that's given in here, but you can actually change this to fit what you want because you can alter these. Uh, you can kind of change the rate, change the principal, change how many pay periods there are. Uh, and it adjusts because we also have a spreadsheet that kind of covers all those amounts. All right, so you can kind of see after 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 payments, that sort of thing, uh, what those values are. Uh, and you can adjust it here on this screen based on how many pay periods you're having per year. And then you also have a sliding scale. So, and the activity kind of goes through what all this means. Now, as you, the teacher, are going through this activity, you might be questioning, okay, well, well what's going on? What do I need to know? Uh, well, that's where the teacher notes come in because we don't want to have you just flying blind in this. So we have provided notes for you uh, that you can use for this. Uh, so on your notes, we can see that you know we have our objectives, our vocab, uh, the files that are associated with it on the right, uh, some information about the lesson. This was one part that we added to it is how does it align with uh, IB and what specific topic and subtopic it kind of goes with. So this would be 1.4, so topic 1.4, uh, financial applications of geometric sequences in series involving compound interest and annual de depreciation. So we're adding that IB, and you'll notice in the top corner, you'll also notice that this has been IB lined. IB has not said, oh yeah, that's good, you can use it. That is me basically taking what my experience is with IB, creating an activity or updating activity to follow along with what I do in my IB classes, and hopefully uh, you can do in your IB math classes. Um, so that's what we mean by IB aligned. So it is not been given the stamp of approval by IB. It's just we're trying to align it to IB as best as we can. Uh, and then you'll see how we also throw in notes about how to use the, maybe if you have a navigator in your room, what materials you can use, uh, some little tech tips. And I love this teacher tip that I added here because for those people who use the formula packet, the compound interest formula that I teach in my pre-calculus class is not the same as what I teach in my IB class. So I put that in the teacher notes here to show that there is a slight difference in the formula so you are aware, so that the students are aware of what the, those differences are and how they relate to one another. Uh, so that's a teacher tip. So that's why it's important to look at the, the teacher notes kind of going in here. So then we just kind of, it just takes you through. So not only are, are you seeing the same thing that the students are doing, but you're also getting the answers, some explanations with it, and these teacher tips that kind of pop up uh, when it's a good time, if you have the navigator to put in a, in a quick poll, uh, a little checkpoint there uh, throughout the process. Cool, and, I, and I'm glad, and I hope hopefully you can use this one. Again, there's not a ton of topic one stuff that has been created yet, and that's what I'm going to try to change is kind of update things as the year goes on. But in these teacher notes, you have everything at your fingertips. Okay, so you have, like I said, all the answers. And please, 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 if you do these activities and you ever see something that might be off, <laughs> please let me know uh, because I want to make them perfect for you. Uh, but one thing I wanted to point out is, you know, when you get down to this part of the activity, we're actually going to use, because what I wanted to do is I wanted the students to be able to do these compound interest problems by hand. And so that was why we incorporated the formula uh, in there. But I also wanted to give them the options to do it on the calculator. So that's why we brought in the finance solver um, in, into the picture. So there's problems where they're going to do it by hand, yes, using the formula, but there's also a, a time for them so that they can actually plug it in and, and, and see how they get the answer that way as well. Uh, because to be honest with you, I actually use this finance solver when I'm when I was buying my my car recently, uh, I was using that to see what my payments would be and stuff like that. So it's actually kind of a, a neat little tool uh, to use. So I've incorporated that as well 
into the activity. So doing it with the formula and doing it with the uh, finance solver. Uh, and I just have to make this joke. Um, it's not a joke. It was, it was, I was preparing for this this morning, just double checking everything, making sure it was okay. And I found a mistake in this that had already been posted on the TI website. And the way it was, it was written in this, this note right here is why is the, the 20,000 in this, in the, the PV, the, the kind of the present value, why is that negative? Um, and so I put a little note of why it was, but then I didn't realize that there was a typo here and it made no sense whatsoever. But thankfully, um, as you can see, it's been fixed. It is the cash outflow uh, is considered to be negative. So uh, we fixed it. Uh, TI was great. We got it done all today, which, which I was so happy about. Um, but again, it has all this for you. Uh, and then we have a nice little wrap up with some teacher notes and maybe even an extension for you to go even further with it. So. When you get to the end of these activities, I never just want to leave you with, here's the activity, it's done. I want you to be, have the option to go further with it, to have the students have more discussion. Uh, you can kind of see this discussion is how the compound interest formula can be used to um, kind of find the, the compounding continuously, kind of using the limit process with, you know, finding, using that formula to kind of find out what the letter E may be. So, um, so I think that's a nice little extension to that. Uh, and hopefully you'll find this useful. Uh, and then when all is said and done, you're done with this activity, then you can just give this to the students. You can say, okay, now there's an IV question for you to do. So you can just deliver this to them. And it's it's modeled after, you know, past IV questions. So you can have them do this. Uh, when they're done, and it could be like a culminating thing, or you can add it to the next test just so they can have that. Or if you don't like the numbers or the names that are in this, uh, then you can change it because you get a, a a word document that you can alter if you'd like. So, and then I also tried in the mark scheme to mark it as if you know uh, it was done through the exam. So I just just wanted to throw as much as I could at you uh, to help you in this process uh, for that. And you can do the same thing with the 84. So there are some differences uh, than the 84. And let me kind of get out of this. I'm kind of to do. Let me go back. Stop. This doesn't let me. There it is. Okay. So we can go back. And if I wanted to go to the 84, uh, I can go to the same. So now I'm in the 84. This is the same activity. So one thing I really wanted to accomplish, okay, one thing, and someone asked about amortization. I'm going to talk about that in a second. So I will get to you in, in one second with that. What I wanted to accomplish with these activities is if you were using the 84 or if you were using the Inspire, I wanted the activities to be the same. The only difference, unfortunately, is the technology because as the Inspire, you can kind of save documents and and I can send documents and activities to the calculator. We had to make them slightly different in that respect, but everything else about it is the same. So if you look at the, um, we'll just go to the teacher notes real quick, and I'll show you that this is all the same. The only difference is you'll notice this is an 84 screenshot right here, um, but all about the math objectives, the vocab, the alignment is all the same. All the questions, okay, even the teacher tip with the formula, that's all the same. All the questions are, are the same. And I even showed you how to do the same thing we did on the Inspire on the 84. So I wanted them to be as equal as possible because even though I am I love Inspire and that's all I use, that's not everybody. So I wanted to make sure that if you were going to use these and you had an 84, you got the same experience with it. All right, so if you scan through this, you'll notice that everything is step by step the same, except the other one, it follows along in a, in a TNS file on your calculator, on the Inspire. But everything else is identical. Um, even the mistake was the same <laughs> on the 84, but we fixed that as well, so that, that, that works. Um, so that's just one of the things that we are working on right now. Uh, the other things that we are working on and I see that we're running out of time, uh, is in my next slide, 
I'm currently creating these uh, new activities and I, whoops, gone too far. I based my activities on what I saw for the exam this past year. Where did students struggle? And so I wanted to create an activity to kind of help that out. Uh, so you'll notice that the new activities I'm creating are angle of elevation and depression. I could not tell you how many people could not draw an angle of depression on the exam. It blew my mind that they just didn't know where to place it on the picture. Uh, so I just had to do an activity for that. Uh, the hardest question that I graded this year on the exam was finding the inverse of a function and then its domain and range. Uh, I can honestly say that 70 to 80 percent of the students that I graded out of the 250 papers that I graded got that one wrong. Uh, so I said, I got to do an activity on the inverse uh, function. Um, then there's a 3D surface area and volume problem. That was a problem I talked about earlier with respect to um, the, it was a seven mark question and students had to keep using previous uh, rounded answers for fur further stuff. And, and some students struggled with all that. Um, yes, I will in a second. Um, in one second, Ruth, I, I will do that. Uh, it's on my last slide actually. So basically I said, I got to do a 3D surface area problem. And then finally, uh, I had some teachers last year say, we really would like some in integration and differentiation using um, so some real world activities. So what I thought is there was a question on, on an exam I graded that talked about profit equations. So I said, perfect. I'm going to do that type of activity to kind of kind of tackle both things. And then I'm going to update uh, these activities here uh, again associated with what I saw on the exam. So this first round, which I should have everything done uh, with the new activities and the updated activities by uh, the goal is the end of November, beginning of December, so we can have them all to you by the start of the new year. And then I'm going to work on a new set uh, in the spring. Uh, but that that's the plan. Uh, I wanted to to go over the a couple of these, but we are running out of time, and I apologize uh, for that. Uh, sometimes when I start talking, I just keep going and, and I can't stop. Uh, but uh, hopefully, you got something out of the one activity that I showed. So I definitely wanted to show you one. I was hoping to get to two, but um, hopefully, you got something out of that one. So the last thing I want to close with, uh, because somebody mentioned um, basically amortization. Uh, an annuity during my first webinar. When I asked the question of suggestions for future topics. That was 1 of them, so that's top of my list because now it's been mentioned twice. So that will definitely be uh, a new activity that I will do. Uh, for the spring, um, so I promise you that. So, these are the ones I've seen so far. People gave me recommendations for. So if you have any recommendations for future activities and what you'd like to see, uh, something that's different than what I have written here, because this is what I got from the first webinar, you can either type it in the chat right now or you can send me an email uh, and then I can get that to you. So, um, but we have about a minute to two minutes left. Uh, so I'm gonna say, may you have your email? Yes, thank you. I was gonna do that too. Uh, it's it's right here on my last slide, but I'm going to put it in the chat so you all can have it at gmail.com. What we'll try to do is we will send out, um, I'll talk to Ruth about sending out the, the files that I talked about tonight. Uh, and then if you don't get those right away, please, please, please just email me and I will email to you, you know, at, it's ASAP, ASAP. Standard deviation and variance, thank you. So I'm going to uh, just look at the chat because I think I've answered everything that was on there. Uh, and I'm gonna hand it back over to Ruth to, to talk. So go ahead, Ruth. Okay, thanks, Dan. You still have, everybody, you still have an opportunity to send out questions or comments or suggestions via the chat. And uh, a reminder, as you leave tonight's webinar, you have an option to save that chat in case there are links, uh, Dan's email address, anything that you might want to save. So you do have a, a chance to save that chat. 
as we exit. All right, so uh, the chat's still live. Dan's still having an eye on it. <laughs> if you are into sharing what you have with social media, there are some opportunities for you there to uh, tag the TI calculators. To download a certificate of attendance for tonight's event. That is the link. It's coming out to you now in the chat. You will also get a follow up email from tonight's event. I'll include um, documents, uh, copies of slides, and the slides have active links in them. All right. Um, there will be a, a follow up, post webinar follow up. If you are interested in doing that, there's some general questions. Again, all of the information in the slides will be provided to you in a follow up email. It's some, you know, depending on timelines and when we can get documents to them, it could be as much as a week, but it's usually only a couple of days. That email will also tell you how to find the um, recording of tonight's webinar and previous webinars as well. Okay, so there's how you can register. You might have registered for this one using that very same link. I'm going to say thanks to everyone. Thank you, Dan, for all of the great information. Thank you, participants, for sharing your thoughts via the chat. And we look forward to hearing from you some more. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate you. See you next month, hopefully. <laughs>